right off the bat, it's going to be um, a good old time over in Ireland, Aviva Stadium. For those that are going, it's it's a blast, guys. I was just in Dublin. This will be the third time I've made my way over to Ireland. The fine folks of Dublin are gracious hosts and a lot of fun. Um, so this should be – and by the way, this game, Tom, is a low-key, decent game. It is. Like, like you know, that's something – Brent Key's a good coach – and Georgia Tech ended the year on a real high note. He had them balling last year by Georgia Tech standards. They went seven and six, but they went five and three in the ACC. They had a magical night out in Miami, as we well know. They get Haynes King back. You know, Haynes King is what he is. He's not nothing, though, and he can really run. He has 730-plus yards rushing. He can run around and make plays. Jamal Haynes is back. He's a good running back. They're not – I mean, they're moving in the right direction. They're not terrible. So you got to go play well. But Florida State has better players, and I think Florida State will get enough stops. That's a that's a W, Tom. I'm going with a win in, uh, in week zero. I'm going to say that too. Uh, it's a win. It gets dicey. I think there's going to be a lot of dicey moments this year. You know, the dry spells on offense, and you know, perhaps they uh, exploit a specific part of our defense that either isn't as experienced or the the chemistry isn't there. Look, Akeem Dent missing is a big deal and they're going to be working all off season to make sure that there's somebody who understands how to get everybody lined up for a keen. Yeah. We know it. There are several examples in, in Florida state's past, a uh, recent past, really Terrence Brooks, when he was gone, there was a difference when LaMarcus Brutus was gone, there was a difference. And I, and I'm hoping that the Akeem dent thing isn't another one in those lines of man, we really miss that player. So there's going to be some bumps along the way, but this is a special game. And so Florida state will have it circled just as much as Georgia tech does. We'll revisit that later because FSU is everybody's Super Bowl this year once again, like it used to be. But Florida State wins, win one and zero. Oh. All right, so we're both one and zero oh right out the gate. We both anticipated that. Now it's Boston College on a Monday night, on a Labor Day night. Um, I know that if you're at home and you're thinking about the game and you're like, okay, well, uh, Boston College, all you can think of is the near nightmare that we so perfectly described. Uh, what can happen? Oh, is that a fumble? Did he lose? Yeah, all the whole thing that we did, you know, it happened. And Thomas Castellanos happened. And that's the only thing you're going to think about when you think about Boston College. And I get it. He looked like the best quarterback in football against us last year and frequently looked butt-ass average against everybody else. And we forgive you, Adam Fuller, because it was a flu game. I'll give you that. And because the defense played well the rest of the year, we don't need that nonsense happening on Labor Day night in Tallahassee. Let's get past that. By the way, this will be Boston College's first game of the season. and This is one of the things I like about a Week Zero game is that you get that game under your belt, and it's not against, like, Lamar. I mean, you're facing, you know, you're facing Georgia Tech. They're a decent team. You're going to have to play well. So the speed of the game won't go from zero to 100 for Florida State's players. They will have seen some talent on the other side of the ball. Boston College, first game of the year. And I don't care who you are, if you've got a legitimate opponent, and Florida State's a legitimate opponent on the road to start your year, that's going to take some getting used to for them. I like that, having that distinct advantage there. The players will respect Castellanos because they got abused by him a year ago. They probably want to right the wrong that was that nightmarish game that you kind of get bailed out with a face mask. Florida State moves to 2-0. and oh. I actually don't think it's dicey. I think Georgia Tech is scarier in week zero than Boston College is in this game on a Labor Day night. I got us going 2-0. and oh. Yeah, I agree for a few reasons. Number one, you got a mobile quarterback in game one, week zero, as you said. So if you have any issues there, you're going to be alert to those issues by the time you take on Castellanos. That's a good thing than facing somebody who's a statue and then going, holy crap, this kid's different. Yeah. Because Castellanos did run for over a thousand yards, like yeah, yeah, a thousand yards. That that can be annoying. About but three hundred of them against us. That's correct. The and on third and long, so all of yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I think part of the this first game in Doak, yes, it's going to be under construction. It's going to look weird. It's going to feel weird. But it's also going to be rabid. I have to imagine the unconquered twenty three Knolls are going to be in attendance. It's before NFL week one. You can steal away on a Monday night and have guys that are even in NFL camps, I would imagine, make a special visit down to Tallahassee to be honored. That's going to get the crowd even more rambunctious than they already should be. Defiance in the crowd, all that kind of energy. It helps all the matters. If you play this at a sleepy nooner in Chestnut Hill, not so sure. 
exact opposite scenario. Night game, nation watching Tallahassee. It's a win for us. 2-0. Oh. Week four, or really was it week four? Week three, three. Uh, whatever that, yeah, what, yeah, week three, week week four for us, week three for everybody else. Memphis rolls into Tallahassee. Obviously, that's Mike Norvell's former team, and he's still got uh, friends in, in Memphis and all that good stuff. I, hey, listen, all you need to know about Memphis is they can really score. I actually watched plenty of Memphis football last year because I gamble, kids. I like to wager on football. I gamble illegally. I gamble legally. I gamble all the time. And Memphis was an offense that you could gamble on. The problem was with Memphis is that you kind of had to always take the over because they can't stop Tom and I from scoring. Mm. They really can't. They're awful on defense. Seth Hinnigan on offense. That's the quarterback. He's really good. Like, I bet on the overs because of Seth Hennigan. He was fantastic. He threw for nearly 4,000 yards and 32 touchdowns last year, Tom. Uh, did have nine picks, but he's good. And he'll be a senior, so he's very, very experienced. They lose their stud running back, Blake Watson, who is also a very good player. He's gone. Here's the deal for Memphis. Top 20-ish. You want to incorporate all the, all the metrics? Top 20-ish offense? Top 15, depending on what numbers you want to use. Defense, 90th, 95th-ish, <laughs> depending on the numbers you want to use. They were 94th in total EPA. They were 85th in success rate defensively. They weren't good, Tom. They weren't good. They can't cover anybody. Florida State gets more stops. Florida State wins. We are now 3-0, and but we're also, Tom, Kind of coming in on that Monday going, I don't know about this defense. I'm not <laughs> sure about this. De I, that's the conversation we're going to have after this 51-27 uh, win. Interesting. Interesting. I'm going to take the opposite approach. Not in oh. result. Not in oh. result. Okay. It's a win. Okay. Okay. But this is going to be an example in which we say this defensive line's really good. And, oh. you know. I like that. Okay. Memphis has taken on a lot of teams and, and scored a lot of points in the last season or two, but they don't see lines like Florida State makes them. And while we won't have the splashiness of Jared Verse, who if you saw at the end of the season, he's number one in the ACC in pressure rate. Oh, yeah. Even though we were all, well, not we were all, you and I weren't. We were calming people down, but people were freaking out. Where's the sack total? Where's well, the tackles for loss? I felt like he was a dominant player for most of the year. but anyway, He yeah. was. He really was. And you're going to miss that, but we can throw numbers at the problem, and the depth of that defensive line is going to show against an opponent like Memphis. It's not that they won't score. It's just that we're going to be very, be very proud of where this defense is by that uh, that game being over. We'll see about the offensive consistency at that point, but it's a win, and we are 3-0. and no problems for the offense here. Big numbers. Big, we're going to have an inflated sense of what this offense is after this game against Memphis. We're going to be like, my God, this is a runaway train. They can't stop us. Uh, all right, now we're on to week four. It's Cal. Poor Cal has to come to Tallahassee on September, in September, September the 21st. It's going to be hot as Hades. I don't even like thinking about it. Those poor bastards living, a, living the fine life out there at Cal Berkeley. I've been on their campus. I've strolled through their halls. I've run down that little baby field of theirs, and I've seen the mountains in the backdrop and realized what a lovely place to go to school and get a fine education. But, man, when they fly into Tallahassee, the heat, the humidity, the southern ugliness that they have to deal with, they're not going to know what to do. <laughs> There'll be a fleeting moment where somebody catches the moss blowing in the wind and says, well, okay, all right, this is kind of pretty. But that's it. Then they'll be right back to the clammy, sticky heat and humidity. They're going to think this is awful. The Mendoza kid is garbage at quarterback. This is an ass kicking, ass kicking Central Florida State rolls big. Another win. Uh, this one over Cal in week four. Yeah, very simple. Win. A lot of sweatiness. Ooh. A lot of people going, good. It's like the uh, the old uh, hot and cold sounder we had. It's so damn hot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what they're going to drop down with. We're going to drop down with a lot of points and we move forward at four and oh. Or no. All right, September the 28th, we go on the road. Be careful. That's what I'm going to tell you right now. Be careful. This is a look-ahead spot and a bad one. I'm worried about it, Tom. Lashley, you love Lashley. I like Lashley. That's a really good coach. SMU won 11 games last year. 11? That Preston Stone kid at quarterback is good. They've got some dudes. A look-ahead spot. 
You have Clemson coming to Tallahassee the following week. You can't tell me we're not going to be thinking about that game. That game is huge, especially because we'll be undefeated. We'll be flying high after the Cal game. We've probably put up big numbers two weeks in a row. Uh, you had it, well, going back to the BC game. You had the bye week. You're just feeling good about yourself, and now you're going to go to SMU, and it's their Super Bowl, as you said. And Lashley can scheme it up, and you've got a good, experienced quarterback. And yet, Tom, they're playing, as you well know, and I wanted to double-check I got this right. It, yeah, they're playing at the Gerald J. Ford, mm. and the Gerald J. Ford, renowned, renowned for being a hotbed of problems for people. Just 32,000. Just 32,000 as you walk into the Gerald J. It was built by a billionaire banker. He was like, it won't be big, but it'll be beautiful. And that's what they did. That's what they did. And and they have plans to add to it. Apparently, they have plans to get it to 45,000 and soon. But for now, somewhere in between 32 and 45 is what it'll be at when we get there. Just be careful. I'm a little worried about this game. This is the game. This is the game on the schedule where you're going to be like, are you effing kidding me? That's this game. That's this game. It's the game we described a year ago against BC. We predicted it properly. This is it. We're going to be going, Jesus Christ, we're tied at 17 in the third. This is ridiculous. The Clemson game isn't going to mean anything. Get it together. This is that game. And? Win. Win. Okay. Thing, All right. Just, just checking. Or State gets the win. But I've circled it, Tommy. So I've circled the game. I don't like it. They're going to have the Pony Express out there, right? Everybody, they're going to honor all the greatness that, that was SMU. Now, Doak Walker is dead, so they can't bring him out. But they have their plaza dedicated to their most famous player, which is Doak Walker, who won the Heisman. There's an award named after him. He was a fantastic player many moons ago. Uh, but, uh, but yes, they'll have uh, Eric Dickerson and Craig James. And, yeah, of course they will. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, this is the one I've been wavering on the most. Um, if it was after Memphis, let's just say that you condense it, the Cal game doesn't exist, and you go Memphis, SMU, Clemson. Let's just, if that was the scenario, which it is not, I would have picked a loss here. I would have picked a loss here because you've got an emotional game for Mike. You've got an emotional game against Clemson in a look-ahead spot and a roadie in between. But I think the value of the Cal game is massive for SMU. So you've got time to prepare for SMU a week ahead of time. I, I know what they're going to say in the coaching staff, but they're not going to prep for Cal like crazy for four straight days that week. I think they're going to install for SMU early. And you know that Clemson is going to be something that they install for during their second bye week of the year, like e extensively um, or the, the first bye week, excuse me, in week two. So it's a win. It's a win. Yeah, see, you're with me on this. But th this is a, this would have been a much dicier spot if you didn't have Cal before it. I think that's a huge, huge win for us that we got the Bears to come to town in between Memphis and SMU. Given um, that it's, you know, that Dallas-Fort Worth and all that, get ready, everybody. In my Knowles, my Knowles out there in Dallas, get ready. Your boy's coming to town. Mm. I'll be in town for that weekend, that game. That's uh, I love that city. There's a lot of history there. I want to see this little jewel of a stadium, and uh, I'm, I'm excited. I SMU was a good get for the ACC. When we move to the Big Ten or the SEC, I'll look back and I'll say, you know, that was a good get. That was a good get for the ACC. SMU's going places. They want to, They got more money than they know what to do with. They want to matter in football. They're investing. They got a good coach. That's going to be a good get for them. All right, here we go. October the 5th, we come back on home. We've rolled on into October. Halloween on the horizon, You're starting to feel good. It's been a successful campaign, fresh off a close, too close for comfort win. Now Wuhan Dabo rolls on in here, denier of science, walks into Doak Campbell Stadium and will be as nervous as we should be because it's an opportunity to go ahead and vanquish Clemson yet again. Then we get further removed that the rear view mirror are the losses, all the losses to Clemson, because it'll be back to back. And at that point, we'll have a stranglehold on the ACC. This is a hell of an opportunity. Now, thank God they lose Will Shipley. Played 17 years at Clemson. He is their all-time leader in every statistical category, surpassing every Clemson great. He has 197 career touchdowns, 57,000 yards in 17 years 
of service at Clemson. Lost all of his hair along the way and got married and divorced twice in his time at Clemson. It's a crazy run. You don't see many players get 17 years of eligibility. Anyhow, he's gone. The problem is Moffa's still there, and I like that dude more. I actually think Moffa's kind of a problem. Phil Moffa's a big bitch, and you're going to have to bring the lunch. You're going to have to bring it when you tackle him. Uh, Cade, call my own number. Klubnik will be quarterback in Clemson, obviously, as they roll into Tallahassee with revenge yeah. on their mind. I got Florida State winning this one. It's close entering the fourth quarter, but the Knowles find a way yet again. Win for Florida State, and they stay undefeated. I am less worried about this game than I was from SMU. I am less worried about this game. This is an excellent spot for the Knowles. It's an excellent spot. Uh, I like the way that it's earlier in the season. I, like If you had to pick one or the other, I would have preferred Miami early, but Clemson early is not a bad thing either because you've got just enough time for Klubnik to cause a ruckus in that quarterback room and that offensive room because he's not listening to basic stuff. You've yeah. got infighting. There hasn't been an overhaul to that roster, really like their offensive coordinator, but if the quarterback is going to get in the way of the offensive coordinator, then that's a good thing. This is a fun storyline to tell and talk about the Monday after when we enter our next bye week because it's about the mistakes that Klubnik makes and the mistake avoidance of one DJU, former Clemson quarterback, and that's why Florida State wins by two scores. Oh, win. Tom's going with the two scores, huh? I am. Indeed, I am. I like that. All right, so now uh, we come out of that bye week, and then it's October the 18th. A short six days later, you've got Duke. But again, no Riley Leonard, and more importantly, no Elko. They'll yeah. still be pretty good on defense, but this team probably had its heart and soul ripped from its chest back into your hole, Duke. Take this ass kicking on a Friday night at Wallace Wade. No electric atmosphere whatsoever. Florida State rolls on Big River. Easy win, easy win for the Knowles. Yeah, this is we're talking about on Monday. It's a Friday night game, but maybe even the post game show presented by who knows who could be Deluna Coffee again. Could that be. it's a vanilla game. This was vanilla. That's what this was. They just they're saving stuff for Miami. You go in there, you let Roy Dell, Kaziah, maybe a little bit of Cam Davis action. You get physical with Duke, keep it simple. Get out of Dodge, 27 to 10. Don't need style points because now the auto bid is a thing. Get your ACC win and get ready for Miami. At this point in Tallahassee, Florida, everybody is talking about another conference championship, perhaps another undefeated season. We have just been surrounded by so many wins, so many damn wins everywhere you look. It's a win. There's a win all of last year. That's a win. Ten of those wins the year before that. All they do is win, and now it's all on the line because you're rolling down where the cocaine is spread freely. Miami. October the 26th, a lot of DMX, a lot of belief, a belief system that has not been rewarded, mm. but it still exists amongst the few faithful who only come out for this particular game, and that is when Florida State rolls into town. We roll over to the Hard Rock, our home away from home. Plenty of Knowles will make the trip. Los Tacos, get ready. I will be there, and I will have all six of my margaritas, <laughs> and we will have a grand time, and those shrimp tacos will have never tasted better. The no, <laughs> you, you got me with the, you got me with the, I know who I am. Yeah, and it's a good time because I walk to Los Tacos. My buddy's house is near there. I just walk. I can have all six. And anyhow, the point is, that's all. that's all on a Friday night. Saturday, we get down, we get over there early, we get that tailgate going, and we get to rock it. And I'll be nervous, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be very nervous because I think this is an evenly matched game. I think this is the one. This is the one Mario Cristobal has to have. Mm. Now they got themselves a quarterback. They brought in talent last year. You saw some of that in the secondary. You saw some of that on the defensive line with Bain. Go ahead. Your punishment must be more severe. Thank you. So it's all there. Florida State kicks a field goal from 47 to win it. Ooh. Florida State kicks a field goal from 47 to win it. Yours truly 
nearly gets in a fight leaving the stadium as those fans are devastated and they have to deal with an obnoxious Jeff Cameron who doesn't go as a media member but instead as a fan and gives them the suck it symbol after that goes through and their frustration boils over because now they know, now they know it's going to be another loss. Another loss is coming. That's what they got here. That's what's on the line. You lose this game at home, Miami. You're losing next year in Tallahassee. You got no shot in that game. You already know it. You already know it. So what you do is you go from four straight losses to five straight losses just like that, and that's your greater concern. Now you're nothing again. Nothing again. Again, nothing. Your life's all of it. Nothing. Florida State wins at 34-31. This is another one that uh, I, the schedule really helps Florida State. The ACC did Florida State a solid. Because Miami is on the road at Louisville the week before. Mm -hmm. And they have to take that game seriously. Louisville has improved. Well coached. Uh, they're well coached, but they, they've improved in the transfer portal as well. So that is going to be a raucous atmosphere for the Cardinals. And Miami's going to have to respond, rise up for that in a way that Florida State won't have to when they go on the road to play Duke the day before as well. So you got a one day head start, and then you've got an easier opponent. And that's where Florida State's going to be versus where Miami is. Now, this is the one time every two years that Hard Rock Stadium is filled. Oh, Most right. It's all because of us, but mostly with Knowles as well. But this is when they, they show out. I wonder if game day would be there because what a way to, to stick it to Florida State to, ha to be able to root for Miami openly the way that they often do in the play-by-play uh, -play booth for the 8 o'clock game, the way they, they used to, especially with the Bear on the set because he's a, a Miami apologist. Well, he's I a graduate of Miami, in fairness to him, yes. I just wonder when they lose to Louisville, will game day still be there? Or will the loss at Louisville ruin college game day's appearance uh, in Miami Gardens? We'll see. You think, you think we get another – we get we get back to the, to the good old days here? You think that's the feel in the air heading down to the hard rock? You think you got a sense of a couple blue bloods going to war? That's what they're going to tell you. They're going to tell you that, and then the game's going to be played. That's and if Miami holds up their end of the bargain. Even with the one loss, that they're going to lie to themselves and say, well, you know, that's a, that's a one setback, but this is this is just like it was in the 80s. Mm. And we could play all of those montages from the past 15 years in which they said that exact same thing. Florida State does win this one. I can't believe it. We're undefeated, baby. We're still rolling. Now, is it pretty? Don't care, but it's a win. Florida State again remains with a zero in the loss column in the regular season. That's a lot of consecutive wins in the regular season for Florida State. That's a big kick to make down there, too, man. There's a there's history on your shoulders as you step out onto that field. That's Fitzy. That's Fitzy. He's back. He's back. He's solid. Doesn't care. He may even do something that Coach Norvell has to apologize for afterwards. He makes the kick, gives them the suck it symbol, and the double bird as he enters the tunnel. <laughs> I Fitzy, listen... It happens. The emotions got the best of you. But, son, I'm proud of you. We're not going to look back and worry about the fact that you shot the bird to those children that were in the tunnel. We're not going to look back at you giving them the suck it symbol and really focus on that because I know you're a good kid. You're a good, good kid who got caught up in the emotion. Plus, you heard those fans in the stands the whole game saying hateful things, saying the kinds of things that Miami fans do. It's a devoid of humanity. So you had to respond in the way that you did, and we forgive you for that. Great kick, son. Great kick. North Carolina comes to Tallahassee on November the 2nd. Long year. You know, Mac Brown may or may not be alive for this game. We're not sure at this mm. juncture that we're doing W's and L's. I've been talking about this for some time. A little concerned. I go, he goes single cam on me now. He's a, we're a little concerned about this. Hopefully he is. Got a handle on his diet. Started to work out a little bit. He's less red than he's been for the last couple of years. He recognizes that last season was an unmitigated disaster despite having a top three pick at quarterback, despite having tons of talent at the wide receiver position and running back position. Somehow, some way, that North Carolina team managed to lose five effing games despite having a, some would argue, the best quarterback in college football. Uh, it's, it's stunning, really, that they, that they coached that poorly and played that poorly. They do have Amorion, uh, what's it, Hampton? Is that the kid's name coming back? Mm -hmm. Hampton's a good player. We'll shut that down because, as Tom said, this defensive line eats. North Carolina comes here on November the 2nd. 
Florida State's riding a high. People are worried about a letdown game before you go up to Notre Dame. There ain't no letdown here. Florida State pastes North Carolina by three scores. So this is a situation where it's your final ACC game. You're barely into the month of November. Very strange, very strange setup. Uh, Florida State can clinch a spot in Charlotte, be the first ones to do so. They may already have by being undefeated with one ACC game to go, but maybe it's concurrent kickoffs and you need somebody else to lose, mm-hmm. And but this could clinch it for you. And I think it's going to be a little dicey because of the spot. Coming off an emotional and physical game, about to head on the road for an emotional and physical game, but you get the job done. Dubsky, Knowles are now 9-0. and oh. So many wins. Mm. Just so many wins. You know, I think that the unique spot and the surrounding elements of this game, Tom, are offset by the poor coaching for North Carolina. So that's that's how we get past it. They're unable to take advantage of opportunities here because the poor coaching continues. Yeah, they caught us in a, in a game where we're a little thin uh, in the secondary for whatever reason. They're hitting some throws, but then he calls a trick play for no reason, and that's what short circuits the whole thing. Pick six, in fact. It's huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huge. Uh, FSU rolls to the dump of the town. Mm. Um, we got a bye week on the horizon to wash off the ass of that town. Uh, phrasing, hey, I'm not telling you to get loose while you're there. I'm just saying that it's all around you, the muck, okay? That's a better way of saying it. You got you got that uh, you, you got that extra time, that bye week that's coming on November 16th. You got to go take care of business. So we all jump on a plane. We fly to Chicago, sweet home Chicago. Love me some Chicago. I'll go back to that Italian eatery, see if my scientist is still wandering. And I will partake in the bottles of red wine and the fandom and the friendship and the camaraderie. And we'll watch as the Knowles get on that bus and it gets darker and darker as you get into that town. and You recognize Chicago is a far greater place than South Bend. South Bend, you get over the state line. You go, what is this? This is what it's like to live here? This sucks. Why do these people worship this place? They don't know any better is why. They don't know any better. So forgive them. They know not what they do. Florida State, you like what I did there? Gets the win against Notre Dame, and they do by two touchdowns. And at this point, Notre Dame will be questioning whether or not they have the right man for the job at, 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 as their head coach. Marcus Freeman's a good man, people. He may not be the right man for Notre Dame. And they're asking the questions openly after this contest. Florida State goes on the road and gets the win easily. They lay an egg. Uh, this sucks. But you know what? They had clinched the ACC spot. They're all set. I think maybe they got a little too big for their britches. They go on the road. They think by showing up, they're just going to handle business because they've done that so many times. Turn the ball over three times. Very unlike DJ. He doesn't throw picks, but he threw two on this day. One fumble lost, and it's an ugly, shortened game. Not many possessions, 20 to 17. Everybody is pissed, but then we remind ourselves it's a 12-team playoff, and we're going to be in that playoff. So, okay, that's this sucks, but... Fun trip, good trip, except for the dump of the town. Tom's got him losing a game, guys. I do. Take his note card. Take his card. You could see he couldn't get through it. He had to give up the card late in the process after all these magnificent wins, including a roadie against Miami and a home game against Clemson. He has us faltering in this dump of a town, much to the overwhelming euphoria of Notre Dame fans who are expecting a brutally cold winter yet again. All right, so we keep going, and what we get here is the bye week, as I mentioned. I will not lie to you in the interest of time. I will not go through all the great games that are that weekend. There are some good ones. The following week is Charleston Southern. Florida State wins the game. And then Florida rolls into town and takes that ass kicking. At this point, beleaguered is the Mm. best way to describe Florida. Graham Mertz is wondering why he ever chose to go to Florida. Uh, they went five and seven last year. He got binged up. Uh, they lose a, a a ton of their best players as they, like rats fleeing a sinking ship, took off, including their best player going to their chief rival, Georgia, Trevor, Trevor ATN, riding the hell out. We put them out of their misery. This is an old, old dog who's got – Terrible hind quarters. It can barely move. Somebody, somebody take this dog out back. And that's Florida State. 
Yeah, this is uh, an easy one. That The fun part about this game is because you're coming off of the bye and you play Charleston Southern, you want to get your guys some work today, but once the job is done, get them off the field because we've got a ticket puncher next week in Charlotte to go play in the college football playoff. It's the weirdest feeling for a rivalry game that we've had in a long, long time yeah. because it's not about the moment in front of us. It's about the bigger game next week. Get in, get out of Dodge. You're going to win the ball game. Get some backups in there and rest your guys for next week so that we can go to the playoff. Yeah, well, you're going to go to that ACC championship game, right? You got you got that, and then and then the playoff. So you've got bigger. You're thinking ahead. You're thinking yeah. ahead against Florida. It's a very strange place to be. Well, and you get mad. You're a little mad at Mike because you're up 24. It's early fourth. You got an opportunity to punch it in. He's running the ball up the middle to run clock. We're in an argument about the opportunity to make a statement. Those kinds of things. Instead, you know, he's just being classy. He's just being classy, Tom, and that's. Oh, yeah. that's it's a W. So Tom has us at 11 and one in the regular season. I have us undefeated, another undefeated regular season for Florida State, 12 and 0. That's the kind of, that's what happens here. I woke up on that side of the bed today. I woke up on the undefeated, uneffing defeated 12 and 0 side of the bed is where I woke up for this edition of W's and L's. And with that, we doff the cap. We hope you enjoyed.